Hey, John, I didn't see you today. You are mute, John. I was there early. Ah, early. Yeah, I was there about noontime. Oh. Well, I stopped by the studio. I didn't uh, see if you were there, Charles. Uh, you weren't there. No, I was in eating lunch, I think. At that no, you weren't in lunch, room. Uh, well, I could have been back here in the clay studio too. So yeah, that's what I thought you might have been, but I don't want to venture back there. Yeah. <laughs> sure. What are you hanging from the ceiling? It looks like a ghost there. It's a it's a big hand. Oh. Big arm reaching down. <laughs> <laughs> so watch out, Armando. <laughs> it's it's been here ever since I've been here, Armando. Well, I never noticed it before. <laughs> yeah, it's been there all this time. I know, you You know, a lot of people just miss it, and then one day they look up and go, what is that doing there? Like, hey. You know, it's been here as long as I have. And I have not had the inclination to take it down, you know? It was like, you know. My day, well, maybe one day that hand will reach somebody's head. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, they'd have to be really tall. I don't think I don't think anybody's ever run into it. No, they hang with a stretch, you know, like in Halloween time. That hangs. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we could give it a trick or treat bag to hold for Halloween, and people just kind of walk in and put candy in it. That might be one practical use for it. So how's everybody doing? Not too bad. Okay. It is. It is Thursday afternoon. Everybody walked away. <laughs> yeah. It's Thursday afternoon and we're here. here so, we so in case you're wondering where I'm at, you know, I'm actually in the studio, the clay studio, uh, at Benson. So. Oh, so that's what I haven't said because I don't go to the clay studio that much. I go to the mm -hmm. painting, yeah, the drawing, drawing yeah, the drawing and painting studio, yeah. But yeah. Um, here very soon, Armando, within a couple of weeks, you'll be coming to the clay studio. Yep. Yeah, because somebody said they wanted to play in clay, so okay. We're going to accommodate them and let them let them do that. Anyhow, so yeah, what I what I do on Thursdays now is I come here and I run the kiln, and uh, I'm trying to catch up on all the things that people had made, you know, before the center shut down, and so that's what I'm here doing is I'm glazing stuff and getting it in the kiln and firing it you know just trying to get stuff wrapped up so that's the game plan anyhow let's see how many people we got rebecca's here but i don't see her face yeah um okay well we got six right now okay all right so we're gonna get started uh we don't have a whole lot of work today you know no nope. um, 
No, we Maybe don't. We can talk about something. I'm, well, I'm sure we could talk about lots of things. So, um, you know, one of the things we might talk about is uh, when registration is for this plain air class. Oh, yes. Which is, which is actually going to be next week. Surprise. Uh, so we're I thought we're going to send an email to you. Huh? Well, you're going to send an email or call me or talk to me or whatever, and I'll put you on the list. Okay. And basically, I'm, you know, they left it up to me. I'm going to run it all week, you know, Monday through Friday. And like I said, uh, I'm going to cap it at 25 people. I don't think we're going to have 25 people sign up. You know, I would be really surprised if we did. And it's going to be soon. No face-to-face uh, -face class. No, the 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 uh, plane air class will be face-to-face. -face. Well, how are you going to accommodate 25? Are we going to be outside? Because we're going to be outside. <laughs> yeah, one day. On Thursday. Uh, that's on Thursday. Right. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about that class. Okay. The other class, we don't, the Zoom class, we don't have to worry about it. No. Uh, no. Oh, okay. No, we could, we could have as many people as we want in the Zoom class. And we can have, well, up to 25. You know, I think after 25, you know, or at 25, even though we're going to be out there for kind of a long day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that might be too many people for me to get around and see and, and really effectively help in any way, form, or fashion. So, I hope, I hope Veronica will attend. Attend, attend what? Plein air? Of course I'm going to attend plein air. There you go. See? And if, it, and if it wasn't the coronavirus, I'd be like, I'm getting a ride with Armando. That's mm -hmm. right. You know. Or, and, and also Miss Bernice. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. he's just talking about joining us, which would be fun. And she's I'm, not here yet. I'll be happy to see any and all of you. Okay. So, anyway. All right. So, let's take a look at uh, what that's in today. And then, after that, I will figure out another way of entertaining my audience, okay. right? Maybe we can have singing classes. No, let's. Wait. Not no, today. No, no. <laughs> yeah, let's let's not. Yeah, you you. You're pushing you, it. You do not want to hear me sing. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can a, guarantee you. Hey, sing is art too. <laughs> it is. It it is an art form, and it's one that um, you know I'm really quite bad at right now. <laughs> you know, I used to be able to sing quite well, but not anymore. So, uh, so I, I leave that to people with younger voices, right? Yeah, like, uh, like uh, John, Bob, Veronica. I said, I, said, I said younger voices. Well, they are younger than me, uh, Charles. I don't know whether they are or not. <laughs> well, they are, look at yeah. their faces. Yeah, I was, I was thinking, you know, uh, more like high school age, and younger boys generally have pretty good voices at that age. So after that, not so much. Anyhow, so um, everybody see a, uh, a lady and it looks like she's got like a lace uh, dress on or something, you know? Yeah. Like, like she has tattoos. Yeah, mm -hmm. it could be tattoos too, as well. Yeah. But uh, in fact, it was from, I'll actually show you the image. This was the image that we drew from, right? And oh, so, it's this shadow from the, the uh, curtain. The curtain. Yes, right. Uh, you got it, Orlando. How about that? Yeah. Um, so, okay. So, Bob? Yep. You did, you did a nice job faithfully reproducing the, uh, the effect of the shadows being cast on her back and all. Mm -hmm. um, your proportions are good, okay? Um, the only, I guess, it's not a negative comment, 
the only comment I really have uh, as far as what you could do to maybe make this a little bit better is, you, you know, when I squint my eye down, you really got like three values. You got the dark, you got the light of the paper, and then you got this kind of mid-tone. And you could find, you could find another you know, couple of values in there, uh, particularly like in and around the hair here. Um, you know, it, it really got very dark here and then it got quite a bit lighter out here. And so there was a range of value in the hair and yours is kind of like two steps, right? And so again, just pushing the darks, you know, over here toward the left, you see how dark all of this gets right in here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So overall, you could really push those values down quite a bit more than you've done so far. And it would make that head look a little bit more round. Yeah. Um, you know, as far as the shadows on the figure, things like that, I, I wouldn't mess with those. I think, you know, they're fine. Um, you know, a couple of them seem to be maybe a little too dark you know, being that it's actually on her skin tone. But, uh, but again, you know, I would probably leave them the way they are, you know, at this point and go for just pushing like a darker value in here, maybe a darker value in here on the fabric or something like that, just to give it a little more punch, okay? Uh, the other thing you could do, if you were so inclined, um, now, is this on a gray piece of paper or a white piece of paper? I mean, what? This, this is on a white piece of paper. White. Okay. Is it like an off white or is it? Yeah, yeah it's a little bit. It's kind of almost a, a, a I don't know, I'd say beige, but no, it's not. It's, it's more um, eggshell, I guess would be a better term. Okay. If you took a white piece of pastel or chalk or something and put on it, you know, would it show up? Barely. Barely. Okay. Yeah, then I, I, I tried that on the, on the other drawing I did and it didn't show up at all to speak of. Okay. It's probably uh, just a bad photograph. Um, well, yeah, I mean, the, the, the photo, I mean, the light that you took it in affects it a lot. Um, you know, I was going to say you could, if the paper were a little bit darker, you could punch it up and, uh, you know, get, you know, a light in there, but. You know, if it if it won't show up, then I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. You know, I don't think you're going to be able to get it. You know, get the contrast going the other way. So, um, did you? It looks like maybe you rubbed this back or or toned it a little bit. Uh, the what? The paper? The paper. Yeah. No, no, the paper. The basic. It's it, it's it's just a it's just a crappy photograph. A, a basically. Dark. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Never mind then. I was gonna. I was gonna say push it to the light a little bit. Uh, you could tone it, and then when you put or you pull out with an eraser or something, um, then you'll get that contrast, that light that you're looking for. Um, on your female torso. Okay. You know, nice range of value in here overall. Uh, I think you could push it a little bit further, you know, in, in broadening out the range of value a little bit. Um, and then I was talking to a couple of people yesterday. Um, one of the odd things about this particular image, right, and we'll go to the image right now, is if you squint your eye down, the darkest darks are over here to the right. Mm -hmm. you know, as the torso curves around the rib cage there, underneath the uh, arm over here on the left. Right. And, um, and so they're real strong dark statements. You know, and your range of value, you know, throughout the rest of the figure, you know, is pretty broad. You know, you've got at least, you know, five or six values in there. Um, what I would kind of recommend is that here at the base, uh, particularly on this leg, is that you really kind of punch in that, that bottom line so that, you know, you really define where that edge is and you give it some weight. 
you know, mm-hmm. where it feels like it's really sitting down on there. Um, and so, you know, a nice dark, you know, line in here, you know, maybe a line here, but not nearly as dark, you know, uh, but just something to really make it a little crisper and, you know, define the edge of it. Yeah. And that's about all I would really do to it. Okay. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. I mean, you got the proportion, you got the movement, you got her bent enough. You know, a lot of people try to straighten her up a bit. Um, but you got a nice curve in her spine and the, the movement proportion, everything seems to work pretty well. Yeah. Um, and I think that's it that I have for you. Right. Uh, is Elaine Johnson here? She turned this in a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, no. Okay. Uh, Fran Littner, are you here? Nope. Okay. So guess who's next? Miss Jean. Like mine. <laughs> there you go. Hey, Jean, how you doing? Pretty good. Good. I had a cancellation and I was able to join today. Um, I'm glad you were able to make it. Okay. Me too. <laughs> because yesterday, not, no, not yesterday day before Tuesday, you know, we, we looked at your paintings and we talked badly about them and everything. And, you know, and I decided that you didn't get a chance to hear all that. So uh, I figured I would, you know, try again, <laughs> Yeah, try again. you know, put it in the mix today. See if Good. Find you. Good. So, um, you know, here's, here's what I got to say about this particular painting. Okay. Okay. Which is, um, I really like it, you know, quite a bit. Um, you know, I like the contrast between the sky and the water itself. The water seems to be softer, okay? Right. Uh, the clouds seem to be a little more textural and kind of uh, defined, which is fine. Right. I'm trying uh, to get that up, so pardon? that worked. I'm sorry, what? I said I was trying to pull the ass upward and that worked. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think you accomplished your goal, if that was it. Um, the other thing yep, is the uh, architecture itself. Right. You know, and so you've got a light side, shadow side on most of those buildings. The color and the contrast is kind of interesting. And I like the fact that you didn't go in and put a lot of detail. You know, you just kind of right. suggested that they're buildings. Actually, I was a long way away from Piedmont Park with a photograph, but mm-hmm. I kind of ad-libbed on some of the buildings be, because I did not want to do the uh, integral detail work. I just wanted it loose. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of picked up on the fact that that's the view from the lake, you know, in Piedmont Park looking right. toward Midtown. Right. Yeah. And, and no, you didn't copy every building faithfully, but you got no. the idea. Yeah. And, and that's fine. Um, you know, this, this painting kind of, you know, we, we had done a, uh, a little presentation about different art styles, right? right? And how do you define, you know, um, you know, the style of a piece of work? What are you looking for? Right. And this is, you know, it's a representational painting. Right. You know, but it's not photoreal by any means. Right. And it's almost expressionistic. That's know, what in, I was hoping to get to. to yeah. Expressionistic yeah. part. Yeah, because of the color and, and you know, the contrast. Right. You know, I mean, the colors are not like real bold and bright. But still, you know, within the key that they're in, um, you know, you've got a lot of contrast and a lot of, uh, a lot of nice color going on there. So. Thank you. But yeah, nice painting. Thank you. So how big is this? It's uh, 16 by 20. Okay. And it's acrylic or it's oil or what? Acrylic. I can't do oils. Acrylic. Okay. Acrylic. All right. And I used some of that mix to try and keep the sky uh, uh, more pliable for a longer period of time. <laughs> oh, the retarder? Uh-huh. Yeah, yes. Yes. Okay. And yeah. how'd that work out for you? I think it did a pretty fair job. And then when it really dried again, then I did the 
another coat over it to make it the, the, the clouds look a little closer in and mm -hmm. further away would help, uh, I think, uh, uh, get that effect. Okay. So is this central park? I'm sorry. Say what? Is this Central Park in New York? No, this is Piedmont Park in Atlanta. Oh. So, have you ever been to Piedmont Park, Armando? Oh, yes. I used to go there before they got so crazy. Yeah. Okay. Well, guess what? You're going to get a chance to go again. Because <laughs> that's going to be one of the places we go paint. Okay. Okay. Take your shotgun with you. Oh, we're not taking any shotguns with us. <laughs> you know, we're going to be down there in the middle of the afternoon of the day. You'll be perfectly fine. Okay. Oh, good. So we can go to Willis to eat lunch. Why would you do that? Why would you go There's to Willis? Willis right there in Pigmont Park. It's a Willis. Where they used to be the American Legion, it's a Willis now. Oh, Willis. Willis. Okay. Yes. I, th I thought you said Wendy's. It's like, no, Willis. Willis. Okay, well, not, not far from there, right across the road from uh, Piedmont Park along um, north side. Oh, there's, uh, or, uh, I'm sorry, Monroe. There's oh. a uh, Mediterranean cafe, which is an excellent, excellent Middle Eastern place. What's the name? Very little money. What's the name? Uh, <laughs> Isn't the... In, in the clubhouse? Where they had a no, club? no, 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 no. It's across oh. the street from that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's called Mediterranean Cafe. Oh, all right. They've got a couple of them. They've got one in Decatur, one there. But yeah, it's a great place to eat. Anyway. Um, okay, so let's look at the next painting, the team. Okay, now this one. Again, That's my abstract. That's your what? Abstract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's abstract, but it's not. You know, it's kind of, it reminds me of a, a bed of flowers. Well, I, I kind of wanted to do, in my mind, I had a windblown spring day. That was a thought as I was painting, so. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I, mean, I saw it as kind of like a bed of, of yeah, so like... Pardon? I could have put circles and squares and broken it up some, but I like the movement in, in it. Yeah. Well, with the uh, with the layers of color and the texture, the color and the texture over the green, it kind of reminded me of um, like flowers of various types. Um, and I really only had one complaint about this painting. Okay. okay. Yeah. And it's like all your background, everything else. I really like the movement, the change in color between warm and cool. You got a lot of really nice stuff going on there. But then you came in and you put the pink on top of it, right? Right. But a lot of it is kind of wimpy and you kind of, it's kind of transparent, you know, in places kind of opaque in the others. Right. Uh, and then with the yellow, you really did that. And, and the yellow just died on top of it. And my comment would be, you know, I'd, I'd put, you know, more of that yellow paint on there okay. so that it looks a little more solid, right? Okay. Same thing with the pink in some places. Um, and that way, again, you know, it's a, another layer, right? right. With, with it being sort of washy and transparent the way it is, it, you, you see it but it almost sinks back rather than comes forward, right? It almost seems what? It almost seems like it's sinking back rather oh, than coming back. forward, closer to you. And right. that's why I say, you know, use a little more paint, don't thin it okay. quite so much. Okay. You know, and get, you know, get, get a, you know, a color and a shape on there, you know? And, you know, it, it can have a texture like down in the uh, right hand, right hand side, you know, the really light stuff over here. I mean, the texture of that's like really nice. Okay, get a little color in there. Well, no, no, I'm saying this is fine. Right. See, right. it's opaque enough, it shows up. Right. Up here, 
So you, you got a little, few little spots of yellow, but then it's, yeah. it's yeah. real transparent here. It's real right. transparent. This just goes away. It's there, but it's not there. So, and so well, I'm saying just put a little more paint. Okay. Well, what I was thinking about was to make it look like it's in a distant, in the closest square, a uh, triangular piece of the yellow is closer to me. And with the wind blowing, you would have some, you know, backdrop in it. I think crazy, I guess, but uh, that mm -hmm. that was my thought. Okay. But it needs to be it needs to be all bright instead of uh, a wimpy in color, as you put it, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Well, your color is so kind of thin, and right. it just it looks, you know, it looks like you made the decision to put yellow down there, but then you well, didn't really. First. Yeah, I but you really didn't first. follow through on it, you know, yeah. and color just kind of died on it. So. Okay. So I'd, I'd push it just a little bit. Okay. okay. Well, Jean, I like it. I think it's pretty. <laughs> it is pretty. It's beautiful. You know, I just I just want to get more layers going on in there. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna work right on top of it, and I'll send you a picture when I do it. Okay. Jean, Jean I thought it was a professional that had done that. It's very uh -oh. pretty. Watch that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. See, that's what I love about this class. See, you can overrule the teacher. Like, <laughs> All right, give it a <laughs> well, I'm still going to try it darker, like you suggested. I need to, to, to yeah. see how, you know. It, yeah, not so much darker, it's just more okay. Yeah, well, more paint on it, uh, yeah. uh, a thicker coat. I understand yeah. what you're saying. But yeah. I, it, well, the funny thing was I thinned it out, particularly to make it look as if it's passing fast. And farther away in some spots. That okay. It's really done right. intentionally, but it's not correct for for a uh, from what you say for well, a flat abstract. To yeah, it's it to be more solid, more uh, thicker. Yeah. Uh, well, my thing is, you, it's again, you know, you see it, kinda. Yeah. You know, but then yeah. it, it's like okay, it's it's like you you know you put the color there but it's like a real kind of tentative statement rather than, no, okay, there's a yellow flower or something here. Right. You know? Well, it didn't really do flowers. I just did color swatches, yeah. splotches, I guess. Yeah. And if it was a small flower that was blowing away or a small speck or something, that was the idea of it anyway, in my head. Okay. Yeah, the flowers were in my head. But I am going to try the, to, to give it more definition all over the place. Yeah, I I think you know if you if you try that, right, it'll pull those things further forward and then okay. let the rest of it kind of go to the mid ground and then the background. Okay, thank You'll you. Get a little more depth in it. Absolutely, I I will try it right up on top of it. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, that's my two cents worth. This is I think a, a nine by twelve uh, uh, acrylic is what this one is. Okay. Board. So I got yeah. room to work on it. I'm not worried. Okay. All right. Thank you. It could it could be the uh, colliding ga galaxies from the new telescope too. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. We're not we're not all quite focused yet. Okay. Um, okay. So then we got Rebecca and and uh, I finally got her drawings. Oh, thank you. Uh, you know. So uh, Rebecca has made herself a little uh, what we call chop. You know the uh, you know R B P right? Yes. Yeah. And um, you know, so that seems vaguely familiar. <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, well, you know that a person always uh, tries to copy their master painter friend. There we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate. Um, that's a nice drawing of the lady in the chair. Yeah, uh, it is. Um, now the proportions, you know, she seems a little bit kind of heavy in the upper body compared yeah. to the lower. Yeah. And so there's a little something going on with the scale and proportion there. Okay. And I would say you could make the legs a little bit bigger, you know, longer and, and, you know, just feel like there's more weight in there. Would help right. A little bit. Okay. But, you know, you got the gesture of the pose, you got the angle when she's leaning. 
um, you know, it's it's a nice little drawing. So, uh, as far as uh, this drawing, and this was the same drawing that Bob started off with, where the light was coming through the window. Um, okay, so you got the pose. You know, you got her general length and proportion. Um, now, you didn't put a lot of value in this, you know, as far as, you know, pushing the light and the shadow. And that particular drawing, that's kind of what it was really all about, was where the light and shadows are. Okay. So I would kind of encourage you to go back in and, you know, if, if you're, again, so inclined, um, you know, look at where the shadows are and, you know, okay. make those parts darker and that way they separate away from the areas that are in light. Um, you know, do you need the texture or the pattern? Not really. You know, I, I think if you just did, you know, the major light and shadow, and the shadow was mainly on the left side of the figure, the light was mainly on the right. Um, you know, it would give it a little more impact, you know, to the drawing itself, okay? Okay. Uh, you got Tess here, and uh, so again, you know, um, you know, you've got you got the figure on the page. Um, everything looks pretty good. The proportions are a little out, uh, but the main thing is, I would push some of the darks darker, okay. and you've, you've got the light, you know, hitting the hat, okay. uh, and you've got that you know, being the lightest point. But if you really look at that sweater and at her like chest and the top of her hand, you know, the values were pretty light there. Okay. You know, and so you could really put a little more light and maybe push some of the shadows a little bit dark, right? Giving yeah. yourself more contrast. Okay. Um, I thought that it was very difficult to try to draw the texture of her knitted sweater. <laughs> yeah, it that is. Way, I, I, I didn't know what to do, so I just put some squiggly lines. <laughs> yeah, and that's fine. I mean, you know, as far as making it look like a piece of clothing and, you know, something with some texture and things to it, that works. That's fine. Um, it's, it's more the range of value in the light and dark, you know, that you could push in the dry. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Um, Let's see. Well, we're not done yet. So here's here's the other drawing that you did. Now you almost uh, you you almost went a totally different direction with this one, and almost did her in the style of like Modigliani. Are you familiar? Yes. Familiar yes. With he, he had an eyesight problem, and it came out in his paintings, his drawings. Yeah, but everybody loved it too. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know. Um, yeah, and he was, you know, uh, part of, hmm, I want to say he was a fathist, but he could have been part of the expression movement as well, so. Okay. Um, let's see. And then we have, oh, this is, this is not you anymore. This is uh, Suzanne Schultz. Yeah. Is Suzanne here? Oh, you missed the, um the part of the lady that was doing the you twist. You mean that one right there? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I did miss that one. Okay. Yeah. So basically, you did better on this drawing than almost any of them. Good. You know, you got a nice range of value. You got the movement. Um, you put the weight at the bottom, you know, by kind of punching that up, which is good. Uh, and it's as strong as that shadow that's over here. And so it kind of balances it out a little bit. Um, and you even put a tone in the back. And it looks like you set her on something, you know, like a tabletop or something. Yeah, she didn't need to float, I didn't think. No, no, it's nice, it's nice that you, you did not make her a balloon floating around out there. <laughs> So, uh, no, she looks pretty solid and okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I talked to Armando yesterday about breaking, you know, some of these lines inside, like how you came down, 
with this line and came down to the bottom of the leg. You know, you could take that same line and if you just broke it inside just a little bit, like, you know, right here. Okay. The, you know, what that does is that tells you that this part, you know, is in front of this part right here. And so, again, that, that makes it feel just a little more dimensional. Uh, same thing. So would the, would the line go up on the, the fanny part of her flesh or, or down farther? No, it would, it would like right here where you've got the I line. see. Yes, I see that. Thank you. Yeah, but just, you know, break that line just, you know, I mean, don't go all the way over here, but just a little tiny bit, you know, okay. like right in there. Okay. See, and again, that would tell you that there's another form there and that one, one form is sitting on top of the other. You've okay. got to change in value once you get inside right. to describe that, you know. So you just need that little little hint of, of that break in that line right there. Charles, uh, of, the five, of the five paintings that are drawings that we did, that one was the one that I liked the most. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was the most successful in trying to achieve. Um, uh, the other ones had so much detail in them that was in the background. I think I do better with just one solid piece of thing to look at. Yeah. Well, I'm and, so distracted by the back the, by the backgrounds. Yeah. Well, and here's here's kind of a lesson in that for you. Okay. So what you have to do is you have to learn how to ignore the background, focus on what you want. Right. You know, only use the background if it if it helps you. You know, and that doesn't mean you have to put objects or anything in the background, it could just be the change in value. Right. Right. If it's a lighter background and you have a darker object or if you have, you know, a, a light object on a dark background. See, it helps you define the shape and, and the, the proportion of the form. I, so, I agree with you. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I like to, like you're teaching us to do, to just keep looking and looking and looking at the same item and then all of a sudden you do see more shadows you do see more curves you do see more angles and i'm beginning beginning to understand that and it's it, it's very gratifying thank you for your patience with us <laughs> well, you know um okay so that, that was the last of yours right yes okay what was that armando it's a note on the bottom of that thing. Yes, she's, yes. It says, next time, what is that? Initial Take. steps, rub paper towel almost till, till it's gone. So I think this was one of the first ones that we did. And then in the next ones, you were talking about tone. And I think I asked a question about how to get tone on it. And you said, start off with a light, um, uh, side of the pencil all over your page, rub it back with a paper towel, and I was just reminding myself to do that. Okay, yeah, yeah, to get an overall tone on your page. Yeah, because one of the problems in drawing on white paper is the fact that, you know, you, you've got the outline, but then you start building up the values and things, and, and you still got all these, like, really bright whites. And there is no such thing as white out there in the world and the universe, uh, other than light source, right? And so unless she's one of those lamps that light up and is emanating light, you don't really need any white on it. It's, it's all going to be some value of gray, you know, unless there's like a really strong highlight on it, of which there really wasn't, so. So everything's going to, you know, have some tone to it. And that's the, the value of either toning the paper or, you know, finding, you know, lay out your, your page, get your composition in place, and then take a paper towel and rub it all back. You achieve the same thing. You know, you've just toned the paper. But now you've toned the paper and you've got a guide, you know, to go back over and restate your line. Right. And put them down according to what you're seeing, whether they're a hard edge, soft edge, you know, in light, in shadow, or mid-tone. And, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty effective way of working that way. 
So, so try it if you have it so far. Thank you. So guess what? That's it. That's all we got. Okay. What about yours? Uh, I didn't have any. Yeah, but didn't she do something last weekend that you haven't shown us yet? I did. <laughs> and I haven't gotten back to finish it yet. Okay. Uh, and I will. I, I want to show it to you. Hang on. I want to grab something real quick. Okay. Is it my imagination or is a foot hanging from his ceiling? No, it's a hand. That's a hand? It's a hand. <laughs> we, already, we already discussed that. It's, uh, it's off to grab you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's a ghost yeah. there. So um, I'm going to share something. And uh, Mr. Richard Johnston, who I saw. Hey, Richard. Talk to me, man. I got none of Did he leave us? Yeah, we got to unmute him, though. Hey, Richard. Richard made this. Okay, oh. in, in clay. Oh. This is one of this is one of Richard's pieces uh, that he did before. You know, we shut down the center, and um, oh, okay. I need to I need to get it back to him. So it lived in the cabinet for a little while. But, uh, everybody see that? It's got yeah. a really nice glaze mm -hmm. on. Is, is it a drink shaker? Uh, it's a piece of pottery slash sculpture. Right. That's beautiful. It's a vessel. You can put stuff in it. Like it's really nice. The, he could take the lid off and put flowers in this. Or he could put his pennies and things like that in it and put a lid on it. Like that. Right? And, um, hmm. Hey, Richard. Don't want to talk. Here. There you are. Okay. You remember this? Yes. There you go. Well, I've got it for you. I'll give it to my wife. Give it to your wife? Okay. If uh, if she comes by tomorrow, you know, I'll I'll be happy to give it to her. Okay. But yeah, I wanted to talk to you about, you know, how I was gonna get it to you. So I'm I'm here today. I'm I'm running stuff in the kiln and trying to get everything cleaned out. This is from uh, this is from the clay class. This is a pinch pot. Okay. And this is something that I made. Now, how I made that was I took a ball of clay, stuck my thumb in it, and kept pushing it until I pushed it into shape, right? And That's why I they call it a pinch pot? That's yeah. why they call it a pinch pot? Yeah. You pinch it into place? Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. That's then after, then after that, I took a, a, a piece of like a lace, like a doily. Oh, wow. And I oh. pushed it into the clay. And I, and I let it sit there, and then I pulled it out, and then I fired this, and then I took uh, underglaze, and I painted the outside purple, right? And so this was all purple. And, um, and then I took a sponge, and I lifted out the, you know, all the stuff on the top, leaving the purple just in the recess, so that you, it really brings out the pattern. Yes. I got a question, Charles. Yeah. Um, so you put the lace on, but you didn't fire it in the kiln with the lace. No, on. no, no, no. Oh, okay. No. I thought it would have burned up. <laughs> it would. If yeah. I right. had done that. No. No, but I, I might want to use that piece of lace again. Right. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Great job. So, so after I pulled the lace mm -hmm. out of it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I let it dry and then I put it in the kiln to fire it, so it would be permanent. And then I started glazing it, so. But, uh, and it's kind of about halfway through. So I've got to fire this again to set the glaze. Ah. And then I'll put a, another final coat of glaze on the outside. Will you change the color? Uh-huh, yeah, it will. Well, it, you'll still see the purple and you'll still see kind of the chartreuse, right. you know, green on the inside. Right. Yeah. Because I'm gonna put a, a transparent not a purely transparent glaze, but a very a, a glaze that you'll see the colors underneath. Okay. Charles, do you call that porcelain? No, no, no. Okay. This, yeah, no. This is a low fired, you know, decorative piece. Of glaze. 
Yeah, John? I'd, I'd call it pottery. <laughs> call it pottery. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Right. Now, so that's one piece that I'm, I'm trying to finish up. Is that the uh, beginning of a set? No, no. This was just a demonstration for the class, <laughs> you know, to show them how to do a pinch box and, you know, give them ideas about what they could do, you know, once they made a pinch box. Um, here's another piece that I'm working on. Now, I had started this before the center had closed down, and I'll hold it up. Oh. Huh. And it's a little decanter. <laughs> but here's the thing. It's not finished quite yet. I still have more painting to do on it. But it's taken after a passion flower. A passion flower. Oh, I'll yeah. have to look up the passion this flower. Is, this is the center part of a passion flower. Right. This is the stem part. And then I've got a big round platter, you know, with the petals, you oh, know, that's that cool. sits on. That's so very creative. A passion flower. Yeah. Well, from my end, it looks almost like it's red, white, and blue. It's, uh, well, right now it's, it's Pinkish, right. yellow, and purple. Huh. Yeah. So I'll, I'll take some photographs of it when it comes out of the film and, and it's finished. Yeah. But it's kind of sculptural. It's kind of fun. So, yeah, this, you know, that's kind of the stuff that I'm trying to finish up here. I'm trying to glaze a bunch of pieces that people left that. They had the underglaze finished on it, but they they never came back and put the final coat of glaze on it. So I'm I'm doing that and trying to fire it so that people can get all their stuff back. Good. Yep. Yeah. Is so, there going to be an art show? I'm sorry, I, I came in late and I missed a couple of classes, so you may have already said that. But is there going to be a spring? A, uh, what is it? Older Americans art show or something? You know, it's funny that you should ask about that <laughs> because just yesterday uh, I had a meeting and uh, I got some dates and things like that. Um, there will be. And uh, different centers have different dates as to when they're going to do their thing. Um, now we at Benson, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a virtual art show, kind of like I did last year, but not really. The, the difference is that you know, I'm going to contact people and I'm going to do an interview on Zoom with you, right? And, you know, you're going to talk a little bit about, you know, why it is that you decided to make art, why you like art, why, why are you taking classes here, um, you know, things like that. And then I'm going to show about five pieces of your work so that people get an idea of what you do, right? Charles, I'm kind of camera shy. It's okay. <laughs> you know, you, you, talk, talk to us while you're driving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just looking at your head. You know? Okay, okay. We're going to interview. Okay, yeah. What kind of interview? Uh -huh. Okay, so l let me do an in interview with Armando so he knows, you know, what, what I mean by that. Okay, so Armando, okay, you've been going to the Benson Center for how long? About four to five years. Okay. And you started taking art classes. Uh, did you start art classes when you first came here? Uh, let's see, in the last three years. Okay. And, um, you know, do you enjoy taking art classes here? Yeah. Okay. What do you like about it? Well, it gets me out of the house. I'll meet people. I had the chance to see people and talk to them. And also it gave me a chance to try to create something that I never thought I would, I would be uh, going to be able to do. Okay. See? You just got an interview. Mm -hmm. There you go. That was hard, wasn't it? It was always yeah. hard when you're eating and talking at the same time. <laughs> right. Let, let, let us know what day is that interview, so I get some makeup on my face and I, I might look younger. Right. Yeah. 
There you go. Yeah. Well, okay. No, no I'll, yeah. I'll, con I'll contact each and every one of you. And, and I put color in my hair. Set up a time. Are you going to wear ribbons in your hair, Armando? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> a new look, huh? <laughs> OK. Um, I, always, I always wondered why they don't do uh, combined centers so that there's like one big show of what people are doing in the arts, for example, in all the centers. Well, you know, we, we tried that. We did. <laughs> we did. Yeah, the problem was, you know, trying to get all of the artwork and all of the people and everything else coordinated. And then yeah. how do you get people to wherever you're showing it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, we resolved that last year by the fact right. that, you know, I mean, several of you go to other centers. And, you know, even though it kind of represented Benson, quote unquote, kind of, sort of, um, you know, I showed you work. You know, because you've been participating in the classes, and and so it gave people a chance, you know, to view work from a variety of people. And remember all the pieces that I showed last year. I labeled them so that it had your name and things, and there was no mystery about who made it or anything else. Yeah, you know that's important. So, and and I'll I'll do something very similar to that. We probably won't have as much work shown as we did last year because we had, I think, 140 some odd pieces that we looked at last year. Um, but I figure, you know, I'm going to try to interview about 20 people, you know, and give them a chance to kind of talk about, you know, why, you know, why they make art, you know, what what it, what is it that you get out of making art, you know, and why do you keep doing it. Um, and I think it's important for people to hear. So, well, last, I, last, huh? last year I actually did show some of mine with uh, with Kermit's group. Where, yeah. where, where, where is he at? Bowden? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. So since I take his classes, I did submit a few. They put I included them. Good. With their well. Yeah. Now, did did he did it online? Didn't he? Yeah. Same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, if, you, if you're participating in any of these classes, you know, you should submit work. It doesn't matter what center you go to. You know, it's just, you know, if you're taking the class, then, you know, you should be, you should be showing some of your work with that group. Yeah. Get, get ready, John. You're going to be interviewed. I'm going to be what? John's going to be in an interview. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to interview all of you. John's already a celebrity. Weren't you on TV, John, talking about your yeah, art? I was, yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, they did interview me with the, uh, uh, on the Bolton County uh, right. Senior Program. Yeah, so I did. Yes. 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 So yeah. I'm a star. I'm already a star, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well, John has had his 15, what is it, 15 seconds of fame or something like that? That's it, yes. I think it was more like 10. But <laughs> okay. So, do you hate? Take it right. Take it you get. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for recalling that, Eloise. <laughs> yes. Yes. John. John was quite the celebrity last year. You know. Yes. Somebody else's turn this year. Yep. Yep. Veronica, maybe. Uh, maybe. Who knows? Yeah. You know. So uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what what the rest. You know the crew here are planning, uh, but I'm sure that they've got some kind of scheme, you know, to get people involved. So uh, yeah, it's fine. Um, so is, each, is, is each class going to make a presentation, or each center? Each center, each center will make a, you know, kind of a, a presentation, and they'll they'll be on different days. So, you know, uh, Benson will be on the 17th of May. Um, where, which one, do you go to Bowden, is that correct? Yes, yes, I used to. <laughs> used to, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, I think, I think theirs is the four hours by a day or two, okay? But it's all kind of happening around the same, you know, the same week or whatever, so, so anyway. You know, the good news is all this stuff is going to end up on YouTube, so you can go back and watch it anytime you want. In fact, you can go back and watch last year's. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. gonna be in YouTube, so they can yes. see us all over the world. Yes, Armando, people have seen you all over the world. You've been on YouTube now for two years. You're an international That's celebrity. That's right. You know, I'm I'm, su I'm surprised, Armando, that your mailbox isn't full. You know, <laughs> where's the money? Yeah. <laughs> or at least no. your coach. <laughs> No, I, I was I was thinking it's you know all these women around the world who want to uh, like you know hey he's cute you know be on his couch yeah that's right you know, he's looking for, he's looking for somebody to pose on the couch I can do that right See? that should be his first question you calling me so you can model for me okay that's right there you go well, our How about that? okay all right. Um, anyway, like I said, that's all I've got, you know, for you guys' work. Guess what I'm going to do now? You're going to tell us goodbye. I'm going to what? You're going to tell us goodbye. No. Oh, okay. No. no I'm going to tell you goodbye. Um, I'm going to share with you. Uh, recently, I have gone. Silly people calling me in the middle of class. Uh, I had gone to the Atlanta Artist Center, and I think I had it in the line lineup to show you guys one day, but then we ran out of time. So I'm going to show you uh, some of what we saw there, if you're interested. You know, if not, tell me, and you know, we'll go away. No, we'll tell them to go away, and we'll look. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, everybody see this, uh, it looks like a bunch of fishing stuff, right? And a bench. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. So uh, this was actually a watercolor. Oh my word, look at and, that. Yeah, yeah. Now unfortunately. Looks like, looks like a photograph. Yeah, kind of. Um, Yeah, it's real tight. And, uh, and the reflection know. of the light through the uh, window has some. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, this uh -huh. is not part of the painting. That's actually. Oh, oh. That. That's the window that's across from it. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you look at the actual painting part itself, you know, it's pretty tight. Okay. You know, the you got a lot of stuff in there. And the fishing stuff, yeah. Is that a local artist? Yeah, these are all local. These are all uh, members of the Atlanta Artist Center. Okay. And I've actually got their names and everything for you. Uh, now, this took second place in the show. I can, I can see why. Yeah. Fabulous. And it was done by Catherine Moore. And it's actually not watercolor, it's color pencil. Now, well, it, may be, now it may be watercolor pencil. Because it looked more like watercolor than me, but so I think it's, nice probably, it's probably worth every single penny that she's asking for because the detail is fantastic. Yeah. Now here's uh, another piece. Now this was a fairly good sized painting. I'd say it's probably about probably about forty eight inches tall. You know, like about a thirty by forty eight, something like that. Charles, so, did you show these to us before? Uh, I may have, you know, one of them. You know, yeah, we, yeah, we've seen, yeah, we've seen these. We, we have? Yeah. I haven't, but it looks I like either. Well, well, you're never here, Jean. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. We, we watch free ones on TV. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer, Louise. Eloise. <laughs> yep, I'm a rerun. <laughs> Before she put the figure in, pardon. It looks like it, the she the canvas is divided in half, and uh -huh. the, and then she put the figure on top of it. But, right. You know, it should have been less equal parts, shouldn't it have? Literally. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not crazy about a lot of things about this painting. Um, you know, it's a pretty good painting, but yeah, I would have done something different with the composition and uh yeah i would have probably made the darker part you know bigger 
you know, and uh, maybe move the figure just a little bit to the left. Right. right. Her hair disappears at the, at the top uh, right of her head. Yeah, yeah. And it can, you know, but I, you know, if I were doing that, I probably would try to bring out, you know, just a little bit of value difference or color difference, you know, mm -hmm. so you don't totally lose the hair or the shape mm -hmm. of hair. Um, and it's, it's not like this is all solid, you know, because she does have like little bits of light in there. Yeah. And so she could use a little bit around here to really get that hair to pop out and push that figure forward. Is this acrylic or oil? Uh, I think it said that it was acrylic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is, uh, yeah, acrylic. Yeah. So, but like I said, you know, it's a, it's a fairly good sized painting. And it's nicely painted, um, but could it be better? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, we were talking a little bit about, you know, Bob and me and a couple of other people saying, yeah, we need, you know, we need to loosen up our painting, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, here's a good example of a pretty loose painting, you mm -hmm. know? And it's, uh, it's nicely framed. It's, it's a bit kind of traditional in that frame. Mm -hmm. But notice, look at the layer, layering of the paint. Notice how kind of the warm color, you know, the canvas was toned kind of this light pinkish kind of color. And, um, and they let that come through, you know, in a lot of places in the painting. And you see how it adds just a little bit of excitement, a little bit of life, you know, to the paint surface itself. Um, There's a lot of movement in that painting. There is, yeah. you know. Overall, I'd say, you know, it's really nicely done painting. It's, uh, you know, it is very loose, kind of suggestive more than representational, but that's kind of the nice thing about it. Yeah. They're very, very efficient, you would say, you know, because they, they could have put a lot more detail and stuff in there and it's nice that they did. But if you look at the composition of it and all, it's, you know, the waves kind of lead you in, you know, to the boat, it takes you up and back. You know, so you, you, you break that horizon line, right? Even though it's kind of straight across, the boat's breaking into it, so it doesn't really bother you that much. And this is done by, Wow. Uh, Kathy, Kathy Mee. Yeah, it's, it's an oil. Okay. Wow. Now, this is a watercolor. Oh, that's beautiful. That uh, was really nicely done. And I really kind of nice, loose, wet into wet background. And I can only guess, I would speculate that they maybe did the flowers first. And let that dry, you know, getting the tone and everything on the, the flowers the way they wanted to. And mm -hmm. then they uh, took a, a paintbrush and some uh, liquid frisket and painted over the flowers to block them out. And then they painted the rest of the background, in, you know, really wet into wet. Some liquid what? Liquid frisket? Frisket. Mm -hmm. what, could you spell that, please? F R I S K E T frisket. Um, Can you explain that technique? Yeah, a frisket is nothing more than something that's going to block, you know, the water from getting into the paper. Okay. So it's you know it's it's like taking a piece of tape, mm -hmm. and you put down on the paper and you you paint over it, and then you lift the tape and the paper is still white underneath, but to each side you got paint, right? Same thing with frisket. It's uh, usually, I am so popular today, but they hung up on themselves this time, that's good. Um, you know, it's usually used with like really wet media, like watercolor. Um, with a technique like this, it's really like wet into wet. And uh, basically it just protects the light areas of the painting so that, uh, you know, you don't get paint 
you know, in, into those areas. And you can do whatever you want to in the background very freely without having to, you know, be overly cautious. So oh, this frisket stuff, is it like uh, something that peels off like a piece of tape? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I've never heard well, of it. Well, yeah, I mean, okay. Um, you went it's to like grade school. It's like Yeah, you, you, went, you went to grade school, right? Did you ever yeah. take an art class and then they had to use rubber cement? Oh, sure. You know, yeah. as, a, as, as a way of blocking off, you know, uh, parts of the paper and then paint over it and then you take and you rub with your fingers the rubber cement and it begins to ball up into a ball right well, well I'm, I'm familiar with rubber cement but our art teachers were not were not that sophisticated <laughs> oh okay all right well yeah it's a it's basically a resist technique and so you know well, well the frisket is a lot finer to paint with than the rubber cement it is but it's the same idea, and sometimes they call it mask it, M A S K I T. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and you can, you know, um, the the most of the time the frisket that you get for watercolor looks kind of like white glue. It's kind of milky looking, and then when you paint it on, you know, it still looks milky. Uh, but then when it dries, it dries perfectly clear. But well, the you know, once that I got this last time, you put it on and it turns like pink or a gray. It depends on what they oh, solution they put in it. Okay, all right. And then and you, again, you Charles, know. the idea is to put it on there, let it dry, paint around it, and then you peel it off once the black paint is dried. Well, yeah, or whatever color you put down. Yeah, right. once all that's dry, you just lift it off, and that saved whatever color or the paper itself, so you can go back in and work on a clean piece of paper. So you just paint in like the shape of the flowers where you wanted the flowers first, right? Right. And then you could go back and put it in the big background, and then you can come back in and add your tree branches. Now, in this case, they may have actually used the frisket to cover over where the tree branches were, you know, as well since they have some fairly light areas. So it could go either way, All right? And so the reflection that we're seeing on that photograph is from the, the window behind you again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's an outside window. Yes, unfortunately, you know, that's what happens when you put glass on pieces. So. Well, you can put non-glare glass. Uh, you could, if you want to spend that money, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Uh, plus, plus non-glare glass tends to be a little frosty and it kind of diffuses the image a little bit, you know, which is why I generally don't use it. What size painting is this one though, Charles? Uh, it's fairly good size, probably about, you know, like 20 by 30. It's good size watercolor. Anyway, it's a... Uh, you know, uh, Myung Johnson. Yeah. Couldn't you just do a painting like that and just uh, do it outright, do the background in there and put the flowers in last? Wouldn't that be the same thing? Well, you could if you were using like oil paint. Oh, okay. <laughs> but as watercolor, trying to get that kind of fluidy looking background without it looking all puddly and stuff like that, um, you, you really couldn't pull that off by trying to paint around. I see. You know, because you, you'd get like dark spots and light spots and, you know, it would just look kind of funky. So, mm -hmm. you know, by masking it off, you can get that fluid, you know, and the color to flow kind of evenly around things. And you don't have to worry about, you know, your white flowers. Because mm -hmm. when you peel off the mask, you know, they're there and you can, if you haven't painted them already, you can. <laughs> so. Now, uh, for you guys who like watercolor, um, you know, this is, uh, I'm trying to remember his first name. It's, his last name is Clark. I, I want to say maybe it's Eugene or something like that. But, uh, you know, African-American gentleman, um, does some beautiful work. I think he used to be over in South Carolina, but now he's in Atlanta. 
and um, you know he, he does a lot of you know a lot of paintings you know kind of this theme um, you know reminds, really, me of, reminds me of Andrew Wyeth yeah a little bit yeah yeah and he uses that kind of dry brush technique with his watercolor um, but really really nice nice stuff you know nice values well designed uh, nice sense of light and shadow you know in um, in his work and again you know i kind of apologize for the uh, the window you know for the reflection and stuff mm -hmm. it's really beautiful yeah mm -hmm. yeah he's got a couple of pieces yeah Anyway, yeah, it's called, yeah, Grandma's Quilt. Beautiful painting. Um, yeah, now this, this one, uh, this is a piece of scratch board. And I showed this to Bob. So, yeah, you guys did see this. But, you know, I was amazed at, you know, how smoothly, I don't, I, I'm not really sure what, whether they use like an ink or a dye you know, for the coloration on this guy. Um, it looks like, it looks like it is ink to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, combination I'm, because they, I think they used acrylic ink on this. It may have, but it's, it's real transparent. Um, you know, because it's, it, it doesn't make, you know, the scratch board look cloudy or anything anywhere. Well, yeah. what they'll do is that they'll apply the, apply the ink and then come back over it with the scratch board tools and, and um, give you that impression that, I mean, they'll, they'll scratch it real lightly in areas to, to give the, the mid-tones, you know, they'll leave it alone to, to uh, indicate the darker areas. And then they'll take and use something like a, a, um, a nylon brush to get the real smooth white areas uh, on there. At least that's the way I would do it. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I don't understand. If it's a scratch board, it's black underneath, and you and you and you scratch the black off to get to the white, the white. underneath. Right. But how did he how did he make the yellow? Well, then, then you come back, yeah, you come back in with like a like an ink or a dye, like you know, like doing a watercolor over it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So you you do the you do the drawing part first. And then you you add color to it, you know, in areas. So. If you want to see some really, really, really impressive scratch board work, there's a there's a website, the ISSA, International Society of Scratchboard Artists. And I mean, good heavens, those things are I mean, fantastic um, uh, pieces of work out there. It's it's unbelievable the stuff that people do with a with a. Uh, <laughs> with a exacto blade well that that one in particular that we're looking at has thousands and thousands of strokes on it yep 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 welcome so to scratch board welcome to scratch board right you have to have a steady hand and a patient and patience right right uh, yes it, it comes with practice <laughs> yep. yeah. yeah anyway that's Catherine morgan that's the the same woman who did the first piece um that we it says color pencil but it looks more like watercolor so. um then we have this lovely piece which is uh oil i believe and it's uh it's a good size painting you know it's again it's like about a 24 by 36 of the grand canyon or a canyon out west if not the grand canyon Yeah, and uh, you know, so it's oil. Now here's here's the other piece that uh, Richard Clark, or not Richard, uh, I think it's Eugene Eugene Clark put in, and uh, this is really a beautiful piece, really really nicely done. Unfortunately, no. those silly reflections, you know, show up. But you know, just just the skin tones stuff. 
you know, in you know the way he handled the uh, light and shadow on the figure. Really nicely done. Yeah. <clears throat> really, really striking piece. Now, uh, I know this is hard to believe, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, he actually got first place for this. It's a nice painting. It is. It's beautiful. Yeah. Why, why, why would you say it's hard to believe? I think it's very well done. I was being facetious. Oh, <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. Yeah, it is. No, it's a beautiful painting. Yeah. That quilt, though, is not realistic, but I guess he meant to do it like that, right? The what was? The quilt. It looks like an abstract painting. Quilt. Yeah. Uh, quilting. I've never seen quilting look like that. Yeah. Um, I have. I've seen some quilts kind of like that. You know, most most of them are a little more organized. You know, this is really right. more patchwork. Um, but, you know, in the other piece that he did with the little girl looking out the window, right. um, you know, that one was similar, you know, a similar kind of quilt. It wasn't like your real traditional geometric, you know, re re repetitive design. Um, so. That might have been his technique to create a conversation. Yeah, it might. Yeah. And it did. <laughs> yeah, I think that after you look at the figure and you go directly to her eyes, mm -hmm. then your eye moved over to the quilt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This one, I don't care. You don't like this one? No, motorcycle, no. Well, evidently you didn't like it and it just went away. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. <laughs> Scared it off, Armando. Yeah, there you go, Armando. Okay, it's back though. It's going to haunt you. Um, okay, so now this guy, uh, his name is Art McNaught, and uh, he was president of the Atlanta Artist Center for about two years. I don't think he is currently. Um, you know, we, we elect a new president every once in a while. But, you know, he's into doing cars and all kinds of things. This is a, like a Honda motorcycle. And uh, it's an interesting painting. Again, is you know, it's part of the collage, Charles? No, it's, this is all painted. It's all painted. Yeah, it it's all painted. Like the, it looks like the background was painted in the motorcycle. I say collage, but it could have been painted on top of it. Yeah, it, like it was, and it was just, you know, it's just black and white. Right, right. Yeah, but it, it's all painted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of high contrast, negative, positive. Uh, I guess that's a Yamaha. I guess it's not a Honda. Okay. But he um, left a lot of raw canvas. You know, the background, that's just, you know, it's unprimed canvas. So, you know, it's an interesting look, you know, and it, it has a good contrast to any white paint you put on it. I don't know how archival it is in the long run, though. So, but uh, I, and that's, I guess it's an acrylic. So, so. Um, here's one that really reminded me of uh, a painting that Bob was working on with his wife, and he was walking the dog. But yeah, here's a, a couple of people walking down the trail. A nice kind of autumn scene. Mm. Nicely done. Now, would you call that impressionistic or realism or? I would, I would say it's yeah, kind of impressionistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably more impressionistic than realism. Right. Uh, the thing I really liked about this particular piece was how it was framed. It had a really interesting, nice old wooden frame on it. Or at least it looked old. I'm, I'm not so sure whether it was really old or not, but it looked like it was kind of like re, repurposed wood, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, really nice kind of relief. In the, you know, two levels uh, in there. But, and that's uh, Helen McSwain, and she's not selling it. So, 
Can I, can, I change, can I change the subject just slightly and talk about frames for a second? Sure. Uh, I, I, have, I have got an old, old, old frame that is, has um, damage. It's, it's very uh, ornate, uh, but there's like uh, pieces of the, 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 the design that, that have broken off and are missing. Yeah. Uh, is there a way of is there a way of making like cast uh, plaster or cast some kind of cast moldings, where I can replace those using the other parts of the frame to to make my molds from, and then right. using something to. You, well, know, you know what I'm talking about? Yes, actually, there is a way <laughs> of doing that. Okay. And um, in fact, uh, I learned how to do that when I was really young. Uh, I'll bring it to you. But Tony Manny would do that all the time. He would repair frames and do all kind of restoration work. Uh, but you basically take plasticine clay. What, what kind of clay? Plasticine. Plasticine, okay. Yeah, it's basically sculpting clay. It's, but it's that kind of, usually it comes in kind of a green color. Okay. Um, and it's a, it's a petroleum-based clay that never dries, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, so what you'll do is you'll take that, that clay and you'll make a block of it, and you'll press it into a section of your molding that's still good, mm -hmm. you know, that you want to repeat, okay? And, um, you know, you just let it set up and harden there just for a little bit, you know, usually about an hour or two. And then you lift it out very gently. Um, you just kind of peel it off. And you'll have an impression, you know, in your clay. Okay. So what you do from there is uh, you take plaster of Paris. Okay. Okay. I worked with that before. Yeah. And you'll mix up your plaster of Paris and you'll, you know, basically pour it into your mold and let it harden. And then you can peel the clay away from it without breaking the plaster of Paris. And then you'll shave that down and, and just save the parts that you want and fit back onto the frame and glue it down and then you know, refinish the whole frame. You know, repaint it basically. Okay. Over. Well, that doesn't sound too difficult. Yeah, but that's, that's actually when you're looking at like the corner detail yep. here. Yep. That's what you're exactly. looking at. That's all plaster of Paris that's under gold paint. That's okay. That's not carved wood. Okay. Um, now, what they've done in recent years is that they've started taking um, and making molds of old frames, and they're they're pouring them in like a uh, an epoxy resin mixture um, so that they're harder and more durable and then they mm -hmm. paint for that you know and so you could actually you know remake your frames if you have a frame you like you know you could do corner details and things uh, you know and then you know longer sections and you know make your own frame that way so by just adhering the epoxy resin Relief song onto your wood frame, your your blind, right? So in the in the art galleries uh, of the museums, mm -hmm. um, some of the frames are so very ornate. Um, I guess that would be a wonderful way to reproduce an old old frame. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And or restore. Right. Uh, because yeah, one of the problems that you have with with older frames is that. You know, it's basically a wood substrate, and then it's got a plaster of Paris. All the detail is plaster of Paris that's been glued in place onto the wood, and then it's all been sealed and painted, you know, with like a gold metallic paint or whatever you know, color paint you want to paint. Um, and that's how they're made. Uh, the problem with that is that plaster of Paris you know, depending on the weather conditions and how hot or cold it gets, 
uh, it doesn't expand and contract at the same rate that the wood does. And oftentimes, you know, you'll have little bits of it flake off, you know, over the years. And so, and or you'll bump up against it or something like that to damage the frame. So, but you know, you could you could either make a mold and then replace that section. The other thing, and I've done this as well, just take plaster of Paris, you know, fill in that area and then go back in and hand carve it. Uh, to kind of uh, match it in. Uh, I think it would look like it was hand carved in the, if I did it. <laughs> um, you know, if you take your time and you and you follow the design fairly closely, you know, once you repaint it, you probably won't even notice it. You know. I've done that a couple of different times and it generally works out okay. So I haven't I haven't totally messed things up too badly <laughs> thus far. <laughs> so but uh but yeah you can do it either way. And uh you know, but there's yes, old frames can be repaired. And in fact, okay. I like old frames. Um I you know okay. they, particularly ones that don't cost anything that people are throwing away. And oftentimes, you know, I'll take those and I'll refinish them. Um, and if I need to add details and things back in them, I'll, you know, add the plaster Paris and then totally repaint it and refinish it. You know, you really can't tell the difference. So you wouldn't know it was an old track. So anyway, um, so I want to talk Yeah. Um, so you got this painting, which is in, by the way, a lovely frame. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, really nicely done. It sets um, it up beautifully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's it complements the other painting really well. The uh, you know the subject matter is pretty simple, you know, but nice composition. Notice you know how it kind of leads you into you know the composition and around. Uh, nice use of color. And really very striking painting. Um, this is, yeah, probably like 20 by 30. You know, it's not a small painting. Um, you know, but, you know, nicely painted, very loosely sort of painted in many ways. You know, but it's it's just enough. You know, just enough to kind of tell you, okay, it's sand dunes and grass. And it kind of puts you in that mood. Uh, evidently, I can't focus the camera, but this is a, uh, we've seen her work before, Kathy Mead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And she looks like she could use a little bit of frame repair there. It looks like it got scratched. Um, now, this is a, this is a, a student of mine. Uh, Cindy took classes with me for about five years on uh, on Saturdays, and um, you know she's kind of off and she's painting portraits and you know doing things like this. Um, and she actually put three pieces in the show, and uh, they're all really nicely done. Yeah. This is a goat. Couldn't tell. The only thing, the only thing I see wrong with that painting, yeah, is it's the goat is absolutely centered in the painting. It seems to me that the, if it was shifted off to the right as you're looking at the painting a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, it, it would improve the painting. I think. Yeah, yeah, I I agree with you as far as yeah, I, you know, I I'd, I'd like to see her do a little better composition than that. It, it seems like, you know, she's been doing a lot of these animal studies lately. And this is, yeah, it seems like, you know, she's cranking these things out you know, pretty quick. <laughs> how, much is um, she, how much is she charging for that one? Well, $450. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Frame. See? Right. Yeah. How big is that one? Pardon? What size is that? They're not big. Um, they're probably like 12 by 16. You know, something like that. 
This is an, another one that she's got. Box. And again, now I like the composition better in this one. I do too. Yeah. And generally, I just like the painting. That's better. So, you know, she's got a pretty good feel, you know, for that kind of animal. And, you know, the fur feels soft, the color is nice. You know, so, and again, that's about the same size, you know. Now, this is another painting of hers, and this is bigger. Um, I want to say this is probably like about a 16 by 20. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you uh, know, kind of a, I want to say it's a beach area, somewhere along the shoreline. Mm -hmm. And there's a kind of a detail, you know, really simplified the figure, you know, just kind of a suggestion of somebody, you know, walking you know, with a backpack. And um, so there you go. Great sand dunes. I guess not by the beach, it's in Colorado. Now this was one of my favorite paintings there, out of all of them. I really like, I was really interested in the, uh, the technique. I couldn't figure out how, you know, how exactly they got, you know, the color to do, you know, what they, they did on it. Um, it looks like, you know, the paint was layered and there's a texture or something, you know, on, on the surface, but it's not much of one. But it's kind of striking paint. And, uh, you know, they just say other, you know, so I have no idea you know, <laughs> what that means. Um, and this was, a, again, I think the same person but it's like uh, dry brush technique to me. Uh huh. Yeah. Now this one is an encaustic. You know, it's it's actually got like the, you can see the layers of wax and the pigment. You know, in the uh, in the wax itself. Mm -hmm. So it's it's kind of abstract. You know, and it looks looks like she had put down like a map or newspaper or something and then, you know, and then layered the colored wax over it. Because there's a lot, of, a lot of little stuff in there. Those paintings that have wax in them, are they temperature sensitive? Uh, they can be, yeah. Yeah, yeah leave, leaving your encaustic painting in a hot bar is not a good idea. Or in Atlanta. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what is, what's the word you're using? Acosta? Encaustic. Encaustic, okay. Yeah. yeah. E N C A U S C E I S T. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, you know, encaustic is just taking wax and then adding pigment to it and using it as paint. What's the advantage of that? Does it give it a certain type of uh, appearance? That's a good question. I've never been able to figure that out, which is why I don't do encaustic. <laughs> you know, it seems like it seems like it's almost a painful process to me. But you know, I guess the advantage is that you, you know, you can mix the color to any degree you want. You can combine it with collaging and embedding things into the wax that you can't really do with paint. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's, I'm sure it's got some advantages to it, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, I've had several friends uh, start to do encaustics and I have a great time doing it. It's really fun. Uh, and it ends up getting a look you know, to the surface and stuff, you're just not going to get any other way. You know, um, another thing about encaustic is you can put layers of wax on, and then you can actually carve or cut through it back to earlier layers too. And I've seen people use it that way as well. So, 
Yeah, she's saying pastel. How do, you, how do you pronounce that guy's name? Gugwin? Gokwin? Uh, don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll butcher his name as, as, as well as you. And it's, I think it's a woman, you know. Um, now, it says pastel, but yeah, it was definitely wax on the surface. So. Um, and then there were a couple of pieces of sculpture. You know, this piece was, eh, you know, it was kind of semi interesting. Um, you know, they really kind of, you know, worked on the surface of the wood. Really nice piece of wood, really nice wood grain inside of it. But, uh, yeah, wasn't really my cup of tea. But it won an award, it took third place. So, and then uh, same artist, but now this is a bronze uh, female figure. There he is from a different angle. Hard to make that pose. Yeah. How is bronze sculpture done? Is it heated to liquid state and then poured into a mold or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's uh, usually when you're doing bronze, it's uh, produced in what they call the lost wax method. Oh. So what you do is you do your original sculpture in a, uh, a wax, like a microcrystal wax. Uh, you then take it and you make a mold, like a, a two-part or multi-part mold out of it. Uh, you know, open up the mold, clean the mold up, make sure that everything fits well. You put the mold back together minus the wax, and then you uh, pour bronze into it. Yeah. And uh, depending on the size of the piece, you'll pour the bronze in and then you'll dump it. You know, you'll pour the bronze back out after it sets up for a while uh, so that it's really just a casing. You know, it's not a solid, you know, piece of bronze. Uh, a piece of bronze that large would probably weigh like 400 pounds. Even, yeah. though it's, even though it's hollow? No, no, no. I said if it were solid. Oh. Yeah, okay. it would be about 400 pounds of bronze. Nobody's going to do that. <laughs> but, these, but these large statues and sculptures and things that people do, then they have to have a equipment or a big team, a crew of people to handle those? Um, no, they, they make you know, they'll make the original sculpture and then they'll send it to a foundry. Oh, wow. Mm. And the foundry will, you know, they'll work with the artist to make the mold and then they'll actually pour it. Because, you know, if, if it's a big bronze, you know, you need a, a lot of heavy equipment, you know, and, uh, and several people. Right. You know, because once you pour the bronze in it, it begins to cool and set up to a point where you start getting, you know, slag in it uh, and it's adhering to the, the side. Then you've got to have a piece of heavy equipment, you know, that's big enough and strong enough that you can lift that piece and then dump it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you end up with, a, you know, well, you know, if it's a big piece of bronze, it may take several weeks before it solidifies, <laughs> you know, in the center. So, mm -hmm. you know, plus it would be like crazy, crazy, crazy expensive, you know, to do that. So, um, and immovable, you know, in the end. So, um, now the nice thing about a lot of people who are doing bronze sculptures they're not doing bronze sculptures. You know, what they're doing these days, and, and he may have done this. I don't know, it says bronze on it, I believe, but uh, it may actually be a bronze impregnated resin, okay. which will be, I mean, you know, something that size will weigh like 10 pounds, you know, which is, probably only like one-tenth of what actually bronze would weigh. Um, and a lot of public art pieces now are being done 
in that process. Same process. But rather than working with hot bronze, they're, they're using a resin and they're taking metallic bronze powder and mixing it into the resin mix and then pouring it into the mold, letting it set up and then dumping it. Um, you know, the good news is that the bronze content is so high in it that you really can't tell the difference that it's not bronze and it will age and patina the same way that regular bronze does. Mm -hmm. uh, the nice thing is if it gets damaged, it's actually easy to repair, mm -hmm. you know, and it can be repaired and refinished. Where if, if it's a, like an actual piece of bronze, and it gets cracked or something like that, that ain't so easy to repair. So, but that's that's kind of the trend these days in public art pieces and you know collectible pieces and things is to do them with that uh, bronze impregnated resin rather than uh, solid bronze. Now. So anyway, he doesn't want much work. Let's see. Yeah, now I kind of like this painting. You know, this was a fun painting. Yeah, a little bit too symmetrical in some ways, but you know, I just like the looseness of it. You know, the color. And it's it's just enough to make it read like a, a landscape with a road with a farm. Ode to the Country. And um, I thought this was an interesting piece too. Um, really nice paint surface on this, you know. And they had used some gold leaf in there and layered uh, paint and various things over it. So a lot of, a lot of interesting texture and layers on this. But, you know, kind of a fun little abstract piece. And so, yeah, mixed media. So anyway, that's kind of, that's, that was kind of the show there. But thought I would share that with you guys and encourage all of you to consider actually, you know, going down, checking them out and, uh, and maybe even some, you know, submitting some work to them. Uh, about every two to three months, they have a show that's open to everyone, not just members. And, uh, you know, so it'd be a good opportunity to show your work. Uh, the buy-in is fairly relatively inexpensive. I think it's like $35 for three pieces. You know, now you're not guaranteed to get pieces in. That's always you know, the downside of putting stuff in the show. But, uh, you know, but a lot of stuff gets shown. Um, you know, good good variety of people see it, you know, because they promote the show. And, uh, you know, there's people, it's in the gallery, which is attended, you know, pretty much so five, six days a week. And so, you know, there's people always coming through there and checking it out. Well, we need to prepare five paintings for you, right? I mean, five uh, entries for you, right? No. For the, for the um, presentation that's going to be done. In the well, yeah, you'll, you'll need to pick five paintings and then we'll need to get them photographed. You know, you won't have to actually give me the paintings. You know, it can all be digital because that's oh, how it's okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, so you don't, yeah, you don't need to frame anything or whatever. Okay, you know, good. It's just five pieces of work. Take a good, a well-lit, clear photograph, you okay. know, that's square in the camera. That's the big challenge. Right. Um, and then, yeah, I'll, I'll clean them up. With you. And that's how we're going to present them, okay? Okay. All right. So anyway, that's it for me.
thank you all for coming. Thank you. All right, and we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Morning. We're gonna draw. All right. Abe. And everybody's been everybody's been forewarned, right? <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow we're gonna draw some really fun stuff. You know, you're gonna learn a lot about anatomy tomorrow. Okie dokie. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 Have a great afternoon. See you later. Thank you.